healthy ecosystem, there are 20 to, diff 20 to 50 different species of fungi at play. If we get into the old growth forest, that's hundreds. But in, in the endomycorrhizal realm, 20 to 50 different species are affiliated with those plants. Now, we can really, I'll go back to my original words, screw mm -hmm. that up, and we'll talk about what disturbance does to the soil. Um, but the fact that out of 300 species on the earth, as many as 50 are represented in any one place, it starts to tell you that there's a need for diversity of the fungal species. It isn't like there's just one player working in Connecticut doing all these benefits. We want to bring in the whole team. And the team itself, um, some of these fungi are, are more adept at <coughs> gathering something like calcium, or maybe bringing the trace mineral. Some fungi are particularly noted for getting its early start in spring. Other fungi wait really till the barren years of the tree to take place. So this is why I like the diversity of, inoc of species in a reputable inoculum product like microapply or bioorganics, because this is what I want to bring into play. And if it's a disturbed soil ecosystem, you have nowhere near those 20 to 50 that I'm talking about. I'm talking about an undisturbed place where there's good green growth taking place. And that is not often where we're planting our gardens or our fruit trees. In time, we get there, but it's not necessarily where we begin. Mycorrhiza fungi also bring water. And so moisture from a wetter part of an ecosystem can be distributed through the fungal pipelines to plants more in need. So often you'll find one, if not two, of, of these three species in those inoculum mixes. This, that's a pretty important piece. Um, when I talked about arbuscules penetrating the root cell, in the case of, of the forest, the ectomycorrhizae, they form a structure called the hartig, hartig net. Um, the point here is that the fungi is penetrating into the root of the plant. And that means there's fungal presence there. There are fungal cells in the root. The root, from the plant's perspective, is taking up nutrients to grow shoots and green leaves and fruit. And that fungal presence represents something that's been overlooked for a long time. An arbuscule lasts on the order of three to seven days. It's a very demanding place to be like a fungus penetrating into a root cell. And then it gets cut off from the mycelium and it dissolves into the plant sap. That is like the most amazing mechanism for delivering complex nutrition to the plant so it doesn't have to use up its energy to go through the whole healthy plant metabolism process. And then this is the key to how our fruit trees have much more resistance to disease and less call to pests because of that fungal connection. Again, it's like you're ready for this and maybe you like the details, but if you're not, let it go out. We're thinking fungally. We're going to get there. We're going to this fungal place. But this is the kind of thing that's taking place. And it's that reserve energy that's going to get us all the way to those resistance metabolites. And so we're going to look very much at what it takes to create that fungal soil ecosystem in our orchards. Now, speaking to the Bionutrient Food Association, I know that people are familiar with refractometers and the, the idea of bricks. So the so bricks, you, you look at plant sap or you look, look at the juice of the fruit itself through this refractometer and you'll get a higher reading if there's more soluble solids, which <coughs> represents what? It represents the fact that a plant is doing plant metabolism really well. So to get a bricks of 16, 18, 20, we're talking about a plant that is engaged with environmental reality, has good mineralization, and it is forming those resistance metabolites. You know, this picture is a, is a new pest in, on the North American continent as of about six, eight years ago. Uh, this pest is a fruit fly that came from Japan. It's known as, as the Japanese vinegar fly, or more uh, botanically, it's known as spotted wing drosophila. And probably if you're growing berries or 
cherries, particularly fall raspberries. You might have seen this on site. Um, this is a fruit fly that is quite different from native fruit flies in that it will lay its larva in unripe fruit. And so every eight days, female lays an egg. There's now a new female ready to mate and lay a new egg eight days later. So it really builds its numbers fast. There's a guy in a, a blueberry grower in Oregon named Bob Wilkes. And his blueberries, he does a lot of fungal duff management. He does holistic <coughs> sprays. And he's in a, let's call it a blueberry valley. There's a lot of blueberry growers there. His neighbors have big problems with this fruit fly. He doesn't. It isn't that they're not there. It's they're just not <coughs> that interested to pursue his fruit because of the practices that he's doing, which makes those blueberries do healthy plant metabolism in a big way. And you take a measure of the bricks of his blueberries versus those others, and it's higher. So the refractometer in that sense is just a coarse way for we as humans to see what we're doing has some relevance. And I've been using bricks mostly to like make a holistic spray application and see how long does that effect last? Do I see a bump in the bricks? And that kind of helps me understand this probably was a good approach. Maybe that didn't have so much relevance. So there's different ways we can tie into it. But the point is, high bricks is correlated to healthy plant metabolism. Healthy plant metabolism is connected to that fungal ecosystem that I'm describing. And when people talk about nutrient density, for me, that's life density of the soil. That's where we want to go with what we're doing here. And now, coming out the ear, on the other side of it, you can forget everything I just said, but if you see some mushrooms in your berry patch or out in your orchard, you're doing good. That's a good thing to see. Those mushrooms you're seeing are not mycorrhizal because fruit orchards are said not to have that affiliation with ectomycorrhizae but they're decomposition fungi, the sapotrophic fungi. But the fact that they're there, that you have a place, an ecosystem that favors fungi, it's a good thing to see.